Hey everyone and welcome to another video. So a lot of players ask what the most broken specs are looking to be going into the new expansion Shadowlands. Whether it be looking to pick the most overpowered spec or simply out of curiosity, well in today's video we're going to be exploring just that. We're going to be taking a look at what the most broken spec for each role is shaping up to be and discussing why. Before we get started though, We'd love to hear your thoughts on what you personally think is looking to be the most broken spec right now. With that in mind, let's jump into the video. First up, we're going to be taking a look at our pick for Melee. Now, if you've played any beta or been exposed to any streams, I think you know what's coming here. Enhance, no, I'm just kidding. Of course, it's Sub Rogue. Yes, there is no surprise here at all. Sub Rogues are without a doubt the most broken Melee in beta right now. But why is that? What is making Sub just so powerful that they're head and shoulders above every other melee? Well, straight off the bat, it's no question that a lot of their power is coming from the legendary Akari Soul Fragment. Shadow Strike already hits incredibly hard. Well, this legendary then makes every Shadow Strike or cheap shot you do perform another Shadow Strike to your target with 100% effectiveness, adding so much damage to your burst windows. While you can hopefully rely on Blizzard to nerf this legendary, even if it does get nerfed, Sub will remain to be one of the kings of Shadowlands melee, and here's why. Subtlety Rogue as a whole has one of the strongest kits when it comes to arena. High burst, high CC, and the ability to control the pace of the game essentially makes rogues capable of having a huge impact in any game. Beyond all of that, having some of the best defensive options of any melee, an immunity to spells with Cloak of Shadows, 100% dodge chance with evasion, and the, in my opinion, ridiculously overtuned feint, not to mention tools like Banish, Smoke Bomb, or Shadowy Duel. So, what's changed? Why has Sub gone from barely ever being seen in BFA to now being the most broken melee in the game? Well, first are the new additions Sub has received, the biggest of which is Find Weakness, now being baseline. This is a huge buff for rogues as it basically opens up a free talent slot. And in its place, a new talent, Premeditation, has been added. This talent plays so well into the sub rogue playstyle in Arena, making your openers a lot easier and your burst windows a lot stronger. Combined with a few other huge buffs like the change to Eviscerate now doing an additional 50% damage as Shadow makes even high armor targets a lot easier to kill. Symbols of Death now having a free cold blood tied to them baseline and even the additions of Rupture and Slice and Dice also making a return as baseline abilities, both of which help aid in Subtlety's biggest weakness, which is consistent pressure. Covenants have also been very kind to sub rogues. The Necrolore Covenant in specific offers them the ability Serrated Bone Spike. Right now, even after multiple nerfs, this remains to be incredibly strong, doing good damage and being a great combo point generator. Not to mention some of the most ridiculous conduits. The Recuperator Endurance Conduit makes your slice and dice heal for absurd amounts. The Deeper Daggers Conduit combined with the buffed Eviscerate and Shadow Blades goes to even further buff your shadow damage and make high armored targets a breeze to burst down. Overall, Sub Rogues are without a doubt the most broken melee on Shadowlands beta right now, and even after tuning will probably remain so. In this video, we also wanted to include an alternative for each role, let's say a bonus spec. This spec, while maybe not as broken as our initial pick, is still looking to be incredibly strong. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far and don't want to miss out on our essential Shadowlands news and guides, be sure to smash that subscribe button. Back to the video, our bonus pick for Melee is going to be Windwalkers. Windwalker actually didn't see too many overall changes to their class design which honestly is actually a good thing, taking their performance in BFA into account. The changes that Monk did undergo all go to greatly benefit them in PvP. Fortifying Brew has been made baseline, opening up a PvP talent slot. Reverse Harm has been buffed and now generates 3 Chi and does very good damage. Touch of Death has also been reverted to how it once was, now dealing damage equal to 35% of your max damage if a target is under 15% which basically simply kills the target if they drop to 15%, which is obviously huge in PvP. Our favorite Tiger Companion is also now baseline and has been buffed to have the old effects of Touch of Death, dealing extra damage to the target the more damage you deal during its window, and what this does is offer monks a replacement to their old Touch of Death, but it's a lot harder to play around or counter. And this brings me to my initial point. Monks already had very strong burst damage and great survivability. 
and this is only set to improve with these new changes and baseline abilities. What's really pushing monks into the broken tier though is the covenants and soulbinds that they're receiving. As we know, monks already have a plethora of mobility and burst damage. Well, covenants only add to that. The current go-to is the Venthyr for the ability Fallen Order. This basically summons an army of monks which actually do absurd damage and even healing. So essentially another burst CD. And if you thought two rolls, Flying Serpent, Kick, or even a Portal wasn't enough, you're in luck, because Windwalker gets one of the most unique legendaries we've seen, giving them a dash on their generator, Tiger's Palm, as well as buffing their crit damage by 25%, not to mention the added mobility that they get from going Venthyr with Door of Shadows. Oh, and I almost forgot Conduits. The best DPS one right now is Inner Fury, just buffing the already hard-hitting Fist of Fury. Harm Denial is another strong one, buffing Expel Harm by 20% along with Tumbling Technique or Swift Transference, which both even further buff Windwalker's mobility. So to wrap up why Windwalkers are our bonus pick for the most broken melee is simple. Incredibly high burst damage with Fists of Fury, Storm, Earth, and Fire, and their newly added CDs combined with the same overpowered mobility and great defensives that we already know. All right, so that's our most broken melees covered. Up next, we're going to delve into casters. Again, we'll first be taking a look at what we deem to be the most broken, before then having a look at our bonus pick. Our pick for most broken caster has to be Shadow Priest. Shadow Priest has honestly had a rough time since the introduction of Void Form in Legion, a design that just wasn't made for arena or PvP in general. Having to ramp up your damage will never cut it when it comes to PvP. But damage aside, Shadow Priests, similar to most specs on this list, actually have a very strong kit when it comes to PvP, offering high utility with Life Grip, Mass Dispel, Off Healing, great defensives with Swap, Dispersion, and Greater Fade, but most impactful of all is their CC, having Psychic Horror, Psychic Scream, or Mind Bomb, and of course Silence. Because of this, Shadow usually found their spot in comps when they were more focused around bringing utility and CC rather than damage. Well, what's pushed Shadow up from the middle of the pack to become our most broken caster is the mini rework that they've received, which revolves around how they do damage. Void Form is now taking more of a backseat with how Shadow does damage. The addition of Devouring Plague and tools such as Unfurling Darkness and Damnation means not only is Shadow Priest damage a lot more front-loaded, but also easier to get out, on top of having not only auspicious spirits, but also their mastery reworked for the better. So Shadow's gone from this spec that is mainly focused around CC with damage taking a backseat, to now having all of that same CC, defensives, and utility, but with a lot of easy to achieve upfront burst and sustained damage. Not to mention, Priests get one of the most overpowered Covenant abilities in the game with the addition of the Venthyr's Mind Games, making the target's heals do damage and damage done do healing. They've also gained even more CC on top of some well-needed mobility in Door of Shadows. And I've left the best till last. This ability is so overpowered it even warranted an entire video, which I'll leave a link to in the description. This ability is called Thought Steal, and what it does is not only lets you steal spells like Polymorph or Fear and have access to them for 20 seconds, but also remove your target's ability to use that spell for the same duration. Again, check the video because this ability is insane. All right, so these changes as a whole are looking to keep Shadow Priest as our most broken caster for the foreseeable future, much to the happiness of a certain skill-capped editor. All right, moving on now, we've got our bonus caster, and this one may surprise you if you've watched our recent tier list, as it is the Elemental Shaman. Shortly after our tier list release, Elemental saw some very big buffs, but first, let's talk about their kit. Elementals again, I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but they have a kit made for PvP. High amounts of instant damage, lots of utility and disruption, and just boatloads of burst. Early beta phase, Elemental really didn't pack too much of a punch. After getting buff after buff after buff, Elementals are now a little too broken. A lot of their power is coming from their Covenant class trait, Primordial Wave, combined with the recent buff to Ascendance. Primordial Wave is from the Necrolore Covenant and will make your Lava Burst hit all targets with Flame Shock up. Now, overall, this doesn't seem that overpowered, but hold on a second. You combine this with the recently buffed Echoing Shock and Ascendance on top of it, all with the PvP talent Control of Lava. This recipe creates what can only be described as a meatball sub with extra meatballs, as you're going to be shooting a ton of instant empowered Lava Bursts in just a few globals with the potential to one-shot an entire arena team. Gimmicky? Yes. Broken? Yes. 
Will it be fixed? Probably. But even if it does, these new changes to Elemental look to be promising, bringing back their old playstyle of that incredibly bursty utility caster. Not to mention the powerful legendaries like the deeply rooted elements or the defensive legendary Earthen Harmony. Overall, Elemental's looking to be one of the most broken casters right now and will probably stay that way until release. Alright then everyone, that was our two most broken casters as it looks now on the Shadowlands beta. Was that what you expected or did you think the recently buffed Affliction Warlock would be up here? Let us know in the comments. Anyway, moving on, up next we've got healers. Now if you've played any beta at all or seen any streamers, you probably already know what's coming here. This damage dealer, I mean healer, is currently dominating the beta arena skirmish meta and for very good reason. They're absolutely broken. Even after very recent tuning, Discipline Priests still remain to be without a doubt the healing kings. Disc will always have this problem, simply due to the way they heal. Having a healer predominantly heal with damage makes for something ridiculously hard to balance. They're either going to be broken or just weak. There isn't much in between. Right now though, continuing the trend from BFA, Disc is looking to be broken and will more than likely not see too much tuning. So. What about Disc is making them so strong? Well, first of all is more damage. Disc is getting not only Mind Blast, which now also absorbs damage done by the target, Shadow Word Death baseline means that you'll always have an extra PvP talent slot versus mages and the newly added Power Infusion, but also the legendary Crystalline Reflection, making hitting into Rupture Shields almost a death wish. The raw throughput is also just way too overtuned. A healer that is capable of doing the same damage as DPS shouldn't also be able to do more healing than any other healer. Shadowman heals for a ton. Atonement healing passive is also significant, and if you get to cast, nobody is going to die ever. On top of their already overloaded arsenal from BFA, this priest also like Shadow get the previously mentioned Thought Steal PvP talent which you can again check out in the description. But basically imagine now Disc can use Polymorph, Fear, or steal spells like Vampiric Touch, Blessing of Freedom. Yeah, I can imagine the look on your face right now. This just pushes Disc way over the edge. But hold on, just when you thought that was enough, Discs have one of the most overpowered Covenant abilities yet, Boon of the Ascended from the Kyrians. This three minute CD allows the priest to enter in ascended form and throw powerful blasts at people. These not only hit incredibly hard, but also attribute to atonement healing. Then once the form expires, you'll erupt once again dealing crazy damage and atonement healing. All right, enough talking about disc priest for now. It's time to go over our bonus healer. This last one is more of a prediction rather than based on current performance. Don't get me wrong, they're not performing bad by any means, but let's take a look. Resto Druids are without a doubt shaping up to be the kings of 2v2 and probably if tuning goes as expected, be insanely good in 3v3 as well. Please don't hate me, but I'm going to say the K word again, kit. Yes, Restoration Druids kit is just stacked. Out of any healer in Shadowlands, they've received the best changes by far. If you've played Shadowlands, you would know Druids are capable of being one of the most annoying healers, specifically in 2v2, with the ability to constantly re-stealth, rake stun you, and just repeat the process until you inevitably leave the arena or get one shot by their Destro Warlock partner. Well, this is only being improved upon. All affinities are being buffed. Guardian Affinity now gives Incapacitating Roar, meaning Resto Druids can secure clones. Balance gives Typhoon, but more importantly, Feral Affinity gives Maim. Yes, that means they can now use Maim, Rake, and Bash. To pair with this though, at the cost of Bash, Restoration can pick up Heart of the Wild. Now, if you're an old school player, you'll remember this one and just how broken it was. This allows Restoration Druids to basically become a Feral Druid, buffing their damage by 30% and gaining increased combo point generation, something that is going to be very strong in 2v2. Now, I've not even started on the healing buffs that they've received. Resto Druids have received Nature's Swiftness back, now there isn't anything more satisfying for a Resto Druid than getting a Soul of the Forest and instantly healing your teammate to full with an instant NS regrowth. Overgrowth has also been made into a normal talent, which again is great news for PvP, opening up a much needed PvP talent slot with the loss of Conflict and Strife. Powerful healing legendaries in the form of Verdant Infusion, making Swift Mend an empowered version of its former self or even Circle of Life making your hots much more potent. Combine this all with covenant choices like the Necrolord's Adaptive Swarm can really make your healing over time effects feel extra strong, allowing you more room to control the game, be it offensively or defensively. Overall, we're going out on a bit of a limb with this one, but feel like it'll pay out big time. 
Resto Druids have the potential to be competing with Disc for what set out to be a very fun expansion for healers. All right, everyone, hopefully this gives you a good idea of what's looking broken going into Shadowlands. If you enjoyed the video and want to remain up to date with new Shadowlands content as it happens, a sub to the channel would be fantastic. However, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.